So what is the Fourier transform of a rectified sinusoid? And this comes up quite often in power supplies, for example. So here's a sinusoid. This is a cos waveform. And down here we have the rectified version, where all the negative parts have been flipped to positive parts. So often if you take an AC power supply, you can make a DC power supply by rectifying the signal and then smoothing it out. This will give you a DC power supply. So we'd like to know about the bandwidth of this rectified signal, particularly for high frequency rectification in things like communication systems, for example, a number of other digital electronic applications. So how do we go from this waveform to this waveform? Well, uh, what we can do is we can multiply by a square waveform. So if we took a square waveform, which equaled 1 over this range here where the signal is 1, and equaled negative 1 over the range where the signal is negative, and if we multiply those together, then we will get our rectified waveform. And so we'll do this here uh, and this is going to help us to calculate the Fourier transform and then we're going to know about the bandwidth. Okay, so uh, first of all, uh, that's the important thing to be recognizing that we're going to use this trick of multiplying by the square wave. Now let's think of the Fourier transform of this cos wave. So I'm just going to draw it rather than do all the mathematical calculations. So this, the Fourier transform of this wave here, well I've, I've chosen a period of 2, which means that the Fundamental frequency omega naught equals 2 pi divided by, or 2 pi f, which equals 2 pi divided by 2, which equals pi. So the Fourier transform of this is going to have a component at pi uh, of height pi uh, and a component at negative pi of height pi. So that's the Fourier transform of a cos waveform. And for more information on the Fourier transform of cos waveform, see the links in the description below this video. And what about this waveform here? Well, this waveform, again, uh, we just did this in last week's video, so you can, again, check the links in the details below this video and you'll find the link to that video. And we saw last week that the Fourier transform of this clock waveform was a, way, uh, was a function that had a component. Uh, and when we put uh, for a period of two, uh, this has a component at pi, and the height of this component was four, uh, of course also at negative pi. It had a component at three pi, which was negative four thirds. So this was negative four thirds. And this is at three pi. Uh, it has a component at 5 pi, uh, which was positive 4 fifths, and so on. Uh, it goes to a negative 1 here again. Okay, and of course these are replicated on the negative side here. So minus 4 thirds, and then 4 fifths, and then so on. Okay, and we saw last week that this has a, a, a sink, overall sink shape to the envelope of these delta functions. Okay, so another property we know of Fourier transforms is that if you multiply in one domain, then you convolve in the other domain. So here we're multiplying in the time domain, and so we are going to be to get this function here. And so over here we need to convolve in the frequency domain. So the overall answer now is, and the formula for that has a scaling factor of 2 pi, because we're doing in radial frequency. Uh, so if uh, if we take uh, one function, let's say this is RT, I'll just label that as RT, so this is R of omega, and uh, let me uh, label that as XT, uh, then this is X of omega, so we have this convolved with X of omega. So this is the formula when you multiply in the time domain, so we've got XT times RT, then you convolve in the frequency domain. So how do we convolve these two? Again, there's videos on the channel about convolution, in particular convolution with delta functions. But here we can see uh, what you do when you convolve with a delta function is you take your function and shift it to the location of the delta. So let's think of it this way around. Here's our function. We're going to convolve it with this function here. It has two deltas in this function. So we're going to take the zero of this function and it's going to appear 
over the delta function here, and it's also going to appear over the delta function here. So that's a result of convolut convolut convolution with delta functions. So here we're going to have this one shifted to be centered on there, and the same one shifted to be centered on there, and then you add the two up, of course, multiplying the amplitudes. So what, what, let's see what that gives us. So this function here shifted to the left by pi and then also shifted to the right by pi. Well, this delta here will be shifting to here. This delta here will be shifting to here. And you'll be adding them up and multiplying by the height of this over here. So we'll have 4 plus 4 times pi divided by the 2 pi down here. So we'll get a delta function at zero frequency, which is of height 4. Okay, so uh, that's uh, hopefully you can see that. Now, what's going to happen for at the other frequencies here? Well, with those, that's this one's shifted by there, and this one's shifted by there. So, at um, uh, hopefully you can visualize or you could draw it out longhand yourself. I don't have the space here to show it, uh, but this one will be shifting to here. This one will be shifting to here. As for the for the left shifted one, this one will shift here, and for the right shifted one, this one will shift there. So at this frequency here, which is two pi, we're going to have four from here and minus four thirds from here. So then we're going to be having this function here, which is four minus four thirds. 4 minus 4 thirds. Um, of course, we've got the dividing by 2 pi and the multiplying by pi, so the pi's cancel, and you've got the divided by 2. Okay, so at, at, the, at, at pi frequency, there will be nothing because this one has shifted to there for the left-hand shift, and this one has shifted to there for the right-hand shift, leaving nothing at pi. Okay, so then I think you can see the pattern repeats, of course. So this one will be shifting to here for the left-hand shift for that delta. It'll be shifting for there for the right-hand shift for that delta. So at, at this frequency, there'll be nothing left. At this frequency, you'll have that one that's shifted from there plus the one that shifted from there. So at that frequency there, which is 4 pi, you're going to have minus 4 thirds plus 4 fifths divided by 2 because... Uh, you divide by 2 pi, but you're multiplying by pi up here, so the pi's cancel. And so this is going to repeat along here. So hopefully you can see that, uh, that that's what's happening um, by uh, your properties that we know about when we convolve with a delta function. Okay, so this is the overall Fourier transform of the rectified sinusoid. It's con a convolution of the Fourier transform of the square with the Fourier transform of the sinusoid. So here's those two here, and when you convolve delta functions, just to repeat again, we, we convolve with a delta function, so we take this as our function, we convolve with a delta function, we take our function and we shift the zero frequency of our function onto the location of the delta function. And because there's two delta functions here, we'll have this shifting to the left, we'll have this shifting to the right, and then we'll be adding those two. And when you do that, of course, you get this one shifted here, that one shifted there, Add it up, uh, divided by 2 pi, multiply by the pi, gives you 4. So hopefully this has given you insight into the Fourier transform of a rectified sinusoid. And you can see that the sinusoid only has those two frequency components, but the rectified sinusoid has frequency components that go forever. So this is again under the addition of two shifted sinks, and so these components are going to go forever in this rectified sinusoid. Uh, so what, one frequency goes in, when it comes out, because it's a nonlinear operation, you'll get lots of other frequency components coming out. If you found this useful, give the video a thumbs up, it helps others to find the video. Um, check out the details and the links below the video where you'll find lots of other links, and you'll also find a web page which has a full categorized list of all the videos on the channel. And subscribe to the channel for more videos.